Hey guys and welcome to the show. So in our last part, we gave our lunar lander the ability of flight. And in this video, we're going to make that flight look more apparent by giving each of our three rocket boosters some particle effects. Now just recently, the Wizards at Game Maker released an update to the Introduction to Particle series, and I'll be putting this link in the description. And in here, they pretty much update one of their tutorials that they did way back in Studio 1.4 which is really cool, it's got a whole lot of details here, I gave it a good read through and I highly recommend each and every one of you go and check this out because most of the extremely useful particle effect functions are listed and in here Mark Alexander actually goes through everything in a lot of detail so you can create something really fantastic. I haven't went along and beefed up the particles that I put together in the preview that we saw so they are actually going to be much nicer than that. Okay to start this off let's go to our lander. Now we want uh, particles to come out the bottom, so there's a thruster here and there's going to be a thruster somewhere on the left and a thruster somewhere on the right. So when we thrust the one on the left, it's going to move us to the right, when we thrust the one on the right, it's going to move us to the left, and obviously the bottom one is going to give us some elevation. So now, in order to do this next part, we need to calculate the difference between the middle center over here, which is 3729, and the three points that we want to create particles at. So one of the points will be down here at around 3757. The other one will be probably around here at 11.27 and the last one would be around, I don't know, 65.27 over here, somewhere around there. So the difference between each of those will be our bottom len x and len y, our left len x and len y, and our right len x and len y. I can actually show you how exactly we calculate this. Uh, let me just get a notepad out, out like this, and we set our middle center, and this is going to be 37 and 29 and then we click where we want the particles to come out of so in this case I'm going to go for the same x coordinate but a different y so let's say 3757 so 3757 so in this case our len x would be 0 because the difference between 37 and 37 is 0 and our len y would be plus 30 very cool stuff so that's our bottom and then if we work out the left one we say 3727 and let's put it somewhere at mm, about over here. Let's open up again. So in this case, it's going to be 11 and 27. And the difference between that means our len x is negative 28, I mean 26. And our len y is going to be 0. And now the cool thing about this one and the one on the other side is it's really similar. So the len x of our last guy would be plus 26 and the len y would be zero also. So there we go, we've got our bottom, we've got our left and we've got our right. So let's set this back to middle center. Let's go on to our lander and I'm gonna create some variables here. Bottom len x, bottom len y, left len x, left len y, right len x, right len y and each of these is going to get a value that we set earlier 0 and 30 negative 26 and 0 positive 26 and 0 and actually what I want to do let's make these ones a little closer to the ship so how about a 22 okay cool so that's all set up and you don't have to put pluses in front of the positive numbers that's already implied. Next let's go ahead and create the particle system. Now Mark uses a very good analogy for the particle system. He says it's a container that we can manipulate and put things in the container and then we can take them out and use them at a later stage. So here we're going to say simply part system create and because we're using Game Maker Studio 2 we are doing part system create layer and put this on the instances layer and it's not going to be persistent because in this case I'm just confining this particle system to the lander. When the lander is destroyed, the particle system gets destroyed and obviously that will cascade down to the emitters and the particles themselves. Next let's actually create the particle. I'm going to call it fire because when I think of thrusters I'm thinking of fire and blazing glory. So let's go ahead and say part type create. Now there are many, 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 many functions you can use to manipulate the particle that you're creating. We're going to be taking advantage of seven of those. There's going to be the part type shape. This is the predefined shape of the particle. There are all kinds of different types. So we're going to say the 
instance to manipulate the particle instance is fire and the shape we're gonna say PT shape and you'll see there'll be a huge list circle cloud explosion pixel ring sphere square star uh, I thought flare looked really cool so let's go for flare next we're gonna say part type uh, size so this is the size min and max of the particles now I'm gonna start them off really 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 small 0 0.005 and the max size, I'm also going to make it small, 0 0.025. So they only get slightly bigger. The size increase is going to be zero. They're going to be static. When they create it, they're not going to change in size. And we can put the wiggle at 0 02. On average, the particle size will be smack bang in between 0 0.005 and 0 0.025. And this wiggle will determine how close it is to that average. A greater wiggle means it will be further away from that average most of the time. A smaller wiggle will mean it's more than likely on average. And I'm not gonna be increasing on size, so whatever it gets created at that random point in time will be its size for life. Then we're gonna say part type color, and I'm gonna say color three, fire, color one. Now I'm going to think of like a propane fire because it looks exciting. And that kind of goes from like a blue to an orange to a red. What this is going to do is it's going to say that when the particle is created, it's going to be blue. And as it progresses with life, it's going to change to an orange and then it's going to change to a red before it dies. So a blue flame is usually the hottest. So that's going to be first. And then a red flame is going to be, in my opinion, the, the coolest of the flames over there. So that's going to get called at the end. We might need to swap these orange and red around depending on how it looks, but I think this will be OK. Next, I'm going to do part type alpha and it's going to be alpha 3 because we want 3 we want a blend of 3 fire it's going to start off at a 0 0.5 then I want it to be a 1 and then finally it's going to be invisible at a 0 next we're going to say part type speed minimum speed is going to be about 2 uh, pixels per step the maximum speed I'm going to say 5 uh, the increase I'm going to say negative 0.1 and the negative means that it's going to be decreasing so it's going to start off at 5 at the max speed and then decrease to the min speed if this was a positive number then it would be the opposite it would start off at the minimum speed and accelerate but in this case there's a bit of friction and whatnot so it's going to be decreasing and 0 is going to be the wiggle because I want it to be as close to the average as possible then I want everything to blend so let's do a part type blend fire and additive yes we're gonna have true there and then how long do we want this particle to survive for so that's the life the life of the fire particle is going to be between five and ten steps so it's very quick the longer the life the longer the particle will survive for so the longer the trail in this case because I'm going to be creating an emitter which is going to emit a trail of particles speaking of emitters let's go ahead and create that here part emitter Create and on parts. Okay, so there we go. We've got our coordinates. We've got the particle system. So as a container, we're going to be storing everything in. We have the type of particle set up over here, configured, and we've got an emitter for the particle system. Now emitters can be moved around. So even though we've got three points that we want to create fire from, I'm not creating three emitters. That's unnecessary. So let's save that create event and head on to the step. Now one thing I actually left out on my last tutorial, I don't know why I, I just spaced, I suppose, went onto autopilot, but down here, when we want the craft to correct itself, there was supposed to be a not over here. So when the user is not pressing one of these keys, then it will correct itself and stabilize. So remember that, to put that not in front. All right, let's head up to keyboard check VK down. Now, one thing to do over here is depending on the key press I want to update the particles direction so part type direction of the fire particle I'm gonna say 270 so that's going to be down and 270 direction increase zero wiggle zero and let's add these for everything left is going to be 180 degrees and for the right is going to be zero. Okay, so now the particles are flying out in the correct direction. Let's go back up to the VK down. Now because we are flying around and 
the craft that we're in can tilt, it can rotate slightly. I want to make sure that if at all we change the allowed rotation, we still want that thruster to be thrusting our particles at the exact same spot. So in order to do that, we're going to be using a little sophisticated piece of code. You might have seen it in some of my older tutorials where we created bullets at the tip of a gun, no matter where it was pointing on those turrets and how the rotation was, and it always came out perfectly in the right direction. So that's ultimately the same. Part emitter. So we want the emitter to create some particles. We're going to give it a region. And this takes in the particle system, part sys. It takes in the emitter. Then it takes in the X-men, and in this case the X-men is X plus length direction X bottom then X image angle of the craft minus length direction Y bottom len Y image angle comma then I'm going to actually shift this a bit to the left let's copy this guy X plus length direction X bottom len X image angle minus length direction Y Oops, that's not supposed to be underscored image angle so our min and max are the same then for our y min and y max change these to y length direction y bottom len x image angle that stays these minuses become pluses these change to x so it's like an opposite and that stays as y so there's a bit of a pattern here. These are all X's, those are all Y's, these two are X's, and those bottom two are X's, these top two are Y's, and these bottom two are Y's, these are X's, and these are Y's. And then our shape, PS, shape, now there are quite a few shapes here, diamond, ellipse, line, rectangle, I'm going to say line. And lastly, our distribution is going to be PS, distribution, linear. Okay, and let's put a semicolon on the end of that. Okay, cool. So that should be happy. This is going to be creating particles in the particle system at the correct spot right over there. And actually for the VK left and the VK right, I can go ahead and copy this. And I can paste it in and change minor things. Bottom len X just becomes left. So let's change all the bottoms to left. Just like this. And I can copy this again. And I can paste them here and change everything that says left to right. And those will match up with the variables that we created in our create event. Now let's do some formatting on this. And once we've set the region, we now need to tell it to create those pixels in that region. And to do that, right below the region, we say part emitter burst so let's put this down the line next to one line down and we want to burst on part sys on the emitter and the particle type is fire and the number is the number of particles we want 15 quite a few and you can change that to increase or decrease the density of particles in this region there yeah, let's keep it all together like that. Now some of you are looking at this and saying, hey, there's a lot of repeated code here. Maybe we can take some of these things out. Well, ultimately, I'm repeating it three times because I want all three of these regions to be able to be created and used at the same time. So if we're holding down the down key, the left key and the right key, I want three trails of fire to be exiting our ship and not just one at a time. So that's why these are repeated and not just put right at the bottom. Now we've got the key down, escape, and the ground. We should probably make use of these to destroy our particle system. So before we go to the menu, I'm going to say if part system exists, and this is part SYS, then part system destroy part SYS. Now I really like to do a little check before I destroy anything. 
just in case it doesn't exist. And the cool thing about this part system destroy is it goes ahead and cascades down to everything from emitters down to the particle itself. So you just call this guy destroy your system, the whole shebang uh, is cleared from your memory. And then right here when we hit the ground also destroy the particle system. Maybe over here we can, instead of destroying it, um, we can use it to create a different kind of particle like fire, perhaps the fire we saw in this awesome story over here. Although it is in space so that is a bit of a hot topic. But if you want it to kind of look cool, maybe you're on a different planet that has a bit of oxygen, go ahead and create a cool fire effect when you crash. Maybe we can do that later. I'll think about it. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. So let's go ahead and quickly review what we put together. We've got our create where we set the differences in coordinates from the center to the places we want the particles to be emitted from. We are creating the particle system at the layer where the instances are. You can, if you want, create a layer dedicated to particles. But in this case, I'm just putting it on the instances layer. Then here we create the actual particle type. I'm giving it a name called fire and we are setting it some variables. Looking at this now, I think these, the size is actually ridiculously small. So let's change the size min to 1.5 and uh, let's make this 2.5 with a wiggle of 0.05. That's a bit better. Then here we're telling it to start at the blue color move through the orange and to the red when it gets to the end of its life. And here are the respective alphas for those colors. Then we've got the speed, min speed 2, max speed 5. It's going to be decreasing from 5 to 2. It's going to be an additive blend. And the life is going to be between 5 and 10 steps. And then here we are creating an emitter, which then in the step event, we are updating the region of. And just before that, we are setting the direction depending on which key is being pressed. Finally, at the end of each block of key presses, I'm bursting out from that emitter and the product system, the fire particle and 15 of them to be exact on each key press. And then on the escape and the ground uh, collision, I'm destroying the particle system, which then will cascade down to the emitter and particle itself. So let's finally try this out and see what it looks like. So here we are within the main menu. I'm gonna click play. And when we tap one of the arrow keys, we should see particles being emitted from those zones. I've given myself an enormous amount of fuel just so we can play around with this. Check that out. So the particles do look pretty sweet. The closer they are to the craft, the bluer they are. And then it changes to orange and then finally red. So that looks really, really cool. What do you guys think? So obviously I invite you to play around with all of those functions and see if you can get your fire particles looking pretty sweet to give you that really cool kind of throttling thrusting feeling. I mean, it feels very warm when I'm pushing this. I feel like I'm, I could go to the moon. <laughs> so if you found this tutorial educational and helpful, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. The project files for this part will be in the description, as well as the link to that really, really awesome tutorial series from Mark Alexander, also in the description. If you like this video, as well as many of my other videos on Game Maker and game stuff in general on my channel, please check out my Patreon campaign. I really do appreciate your support. I'm really loving the suggestions that I'm getting for this series and I really look forward to implementing some of your guys' thoughts um, very soon. So keep those suggestions coming in. You can either send me a PM, comment on this video, or even uh, hit me up on Patreon. I do like your ideas. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then. Stay with me while